All right, I thought I would uh, give a quick demo about how I've been preparing these uh, backing tracks for uh, both practice and for my band. I've been using a karaoke version, and uh, what I'll do is I'll buy the I'll buy the song, and then I'll need to download the the tracks individually so that I can mix them myself. Uh, and so what I'll do here, let's say I want. Um, Let's see, keep your hands to yourself is the one I want, this one. And so this one has a click, it's got a drum kit, a bass guitar, three guitar tracks, and a lead vocal track. So it's pretty simple. Uh, you can, if you want to, just download things individually and like pan them, change the mix, solo or mute, and then click download, it'll mix it and give you that MP3. And what I really want instead is I want to just take these tracks raw and put it into Logic so I can tweak them, I can remix them, I can add stuff. For instance, if I click the intro count, all the tracks are going to have a click and they all get summed together in the mix and so it gets super loud and I don't want, <clears throat> and I don't want that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, um, or what I need to do is click on Solo then click download, click solo, click download all the way through. Now the way I've uh, done this in true programmer fashion, I wrote a um, a tool to do this for me. So uh, I'm going to run my little tool. This is going to open up a Chromium browser, uh, go to the login page, log in, go to the page that I just um, went to, and then it's going to automate this process of uh, downloading. Okay, so it uh, looks like it's done. So now I have all these MP3s, and now I want to bring those into Logic. And I'm going to drag in all of those tracks. It's going to ask me uh, if I want new tracks or existing ones. I want new tracks. Um, I don't know what this does, but I know I don't want this. Uh, checkbox. It doesn't seem like this is um, something about that. I can't remember what it was, but something about that doesn't really work well. All right. So now what I want to do is name these. So this is bass. This is the click. And this is drums. This is uh, guitar one. This is guitar two. And this is, uh, I guess, lead guitar. And this one is lead vocals. All right, so I, I have a, an order that makes sense for me. So it's click, drums, bass, lead vocals, and then other stuff below. So for instance, um, when I make the backing track, I'm gonna import this into stage tracks, with ha which has a limit of six um, individual tracks you can add. Um, and so I want to make sure that I have enough tracks so that if there's a member of the band missing from practice, for instance, we can just enable those tracks. So usually I will group these into, um, say, a rhythm and this one into a lead. I usually don't include the lead because I like to play that. Uh, and for whatever reason, the outputs of all of these are not set. Also, um, I want all of these to be mono. Uh, and let's give them an output of stereo output. All right, so we've got some audio, and I'm going to pan everything to the left except for the click, which I'm going to pan to the right. And the reason is is that I'm using a two-channel audio interface, and when I send this from the iPad to the audio interface, I want to be able to, to send left, which contains all the tracks, and right, which contains the click and any cues I add. Uh, let's see what else I want an intro click and it looks like, yeah, this did the thing that I thought I told it not to do, which is to have a click on every single track. I don't like that at all. So I'm going to just trim that up. And you can hear that it only added, I, I need to turn all of these down. Let me do that. First, I'm going to select all of these, bring the whole mix down. So it only did a count in of four before the uh, before the guitar started, 
and I don't want that. So let's grab, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, make the waveforms bigger, and then we'll just chop off those first four clicks. And so now the guitar is starting there, but I want two bars of count in. So I'm going to bring this over to here. And then I want to grab basically that. And I, I want to line it up, but before I do that, I'm going to click on the click track. I'm going to right click on it and say, apply region tempo to project tempo. And then I also want to maintain the relative position so these tracks will move with it. Um, what I've found is that most of the tracks from karaoke version end up having a pretty variable, sometimes wildly variable tempo. And so what this has done is analyze the click and uh, made all the tempo adjustments here so that hopefully the click is always right on the beat. And that's super, super helpful. So I'm going to select four clicks and I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to paste, paste them and then make sure they're lined up so that it sounds good. Yeah. And this is just to be consistent for the whole band. There's always two uh, bars of clicks before you uh, start playing. And that sort of gives us enough time to, to hear the tempo. Some bands may not need that, but I just think it's important for us not to have any inconsistencies between tracks. Uh, okay, so this is uh, basically how it goes. I need to mix everything to make sure things aren't too loud. <laughs> the other thing I had noticed is I'm not a fan of most of the lead vocals in these tracks. However, we have a singer, so usually I'm muting that, and I'm just playing, when I practice myself, I will include that. All right, uh, let's see. And the click is loud enough. I think this is probably fine. Uh, so I'm, I'm generally pretty happy with that. I know that I need to take the, the guitars here, and group them together. And some tracks will have like a whole bunch of instruments. And uh, since I need to be able to say, I just want to mute all the rhythm, or I want all the keys and synths and fills and tambourine or whatever, and I want to put those on a track together. Uh, so in Logic, I will hit Command Shift D to create a summing stack. And that's going to put both of those into sort of a collapsible group here. I'm going to call this rhythm. And just to make it easy to see, I'm going to pan left, even though all the tracks are already panned left, it's just easier for me to see. This is also a good way. Uh, let me turn that into a mono bus. This is a good way to turn down that whole mix. So I can, you know, balance things appropriately. All right. So now that I have everything set up, I'm going to export the song. Actually, before I do, let me make sure that the, yeah, uh, I like to make sure that this is all trimmed up so we don't have a ton of silence at the end. And I'm going to hit Command Shift E to export the song. And here I'm going to enter some custom text. This is uh, keep your hands to yourself. I will export it right here. Okay, now that that's done, I am going to go into that folder in the finder and just make sure that everything looks good. All right. So we have the, the different uh, parts here just to make sure that I don't get confused. I'm going to delete the two tracks that were summed. Uh, Logic will always export them, but I don't want them. I just want to be able to take basically all of these. And um, I'm also not going to include the lead guitar because I'm going to play that part. So now we've got our, uh, what is that, five tracks that we're going to use for this, uh, for this thing. Now I'm using Stage Tracks 3. And uh, it's basically an iPad app, but the, they have made it work on the Mac. So it, it feels very much like an iPad app, but I like the, to use a keyboard and mouse. 
um, dragging files from Finder and stuff like that is just so much quicker than doing it on the iPad. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all the edits and all the setup here, and then I'll uh, take a full backup and restore it on my iPad. And that's what I use at practice. So this is Keep Your Hands to Yourself by uh, Georgia Satellite, I think. The Georgia Satellites. Okay, so there's our new track. I'm going to click on the I button here to bring up the editor. And um, one thing I don't know if I showed you is that it's a multi-track song. Uh, I'm going to set the tempo here. This can sometimes be useful. It's useful if you have a very fixed tempo, but in this case, it's pretty variable. Um, but let's say uh, I have I put in you know the average tempo that it has. Then I'll click Configure Multi-Track Playback on the drums. Let me go back to the one I just created. We will do drums. And um, actually, before I do this, let me just make sure that I show you how this is set up. In the global settings for stage tracks, if we go to Audio Routing, this tells you uh, what devices are going to hear this when you push play. Um, and then you have multi-track routing, and then you have multi-track naming. So I have globally named track one drums, track two bass, three lead vocals, etc. So it's nice to be able to say, okay, uh, the drummer's here, so I'm going to turn off the drums for all of the tracks, which is really, really nice. And that's why I like to separate them into individual tracks, so you can just mute them uh, or turn them turn them off. And so what I have is... Um, because I'm using a two channel audio device normally, I have all the tracks going to main and then the click going to, uh, aux one. Then over here, uh, where you're saying the main output is going to be which audio device right now I'm recording in ScreenFlow, So it's sort of taken over. Uh, but typically you would see your interface there. And then auxiliary one could be a different, uh, channel on that same audio device could be a different audio device. Uh, in my case, it's an Onyx Blackjack, and uh, which which is right here, and um, it only has two channels. So I, I basically select the Onyx Blackjack for main and for auxiliary one, and because it's a stereo signal, we've got left hard panned, right hard panned, and so the uh, click ends up being uh, on the right. If if I have a better audio interface, then this aux one trick will be way better because then I could just route that somewhere else. Um, but for now, this is what I have. All right, so that's how everything is set up. If I go back into songs and let's go to keep your hands to yourself, click on the I and configure multi-track playback. So I have made, uh, because I've globally named them drums, bass, etc. it's easy for me to pick the song. So I picked uh, drums. Again, I'm going to hard pan this left and for bass, we'll do the same thing. Lead vocals, rhythm guitar, and then fills. I don't have any for this song. And then click and cues is going to be that track. And this one will be hard pan to the right. Okay. So. Then what I will do is I will go into and say, uh, keep your hands to yourself lyrics. And usually I can find some lyrics for that. So I'm just going to select all of this, go into edit lyrics and I'll paste it in. All right. This is where things get super interesting. So I'm listening. All right, so, so what I've been doing there is listening to when the lyrics come up and I click this button here, uh, which is putting in a little timestamp tag in the lyrics itself. And, and so what this will do is when we're actually playing the song, it will not only highlight the line that you're on, uh, and it will also auto scroll the, 
the, uh, the lyrics view when you're playing the song. Um, you can also control MIDI. So you can have lights controlled. You can have it trigger MIDI on your, um, on your like guitar interface or your guitar rig to like change effects. Uh, really, really cool. Right now I'm just doing the lyrics editors and I'm just going to start with that for now. And then, uh, the last thing is editing audio regions. So, and if you set the tempo up perfectly, this will sort of line up already. But I usually have to make some tweaks. All right, that's actually pretty good. So this is a this is a loop, and I can sort of name this whatever I want to. It's called a region. Uh, I can name it whatever I want to. Um, what I want to do for this song is there's a section in the song where the singer is going to introduce each one of us, and we're going to do like a little bit of a solo. The drummer will do a little drum solo. I'll do a little solo. We've got another guitarist. And so that uh, section can take an arbitrarily long amount of time. So what we could do is find a section of the backing track that we want to loop. And it'd probably be more towards the end of the song. Okay. This is close enough, definitely for this demo. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to call this uh, solos. All right. So now that I have these regions set up, uh, we can, you can map out the whole song if you want to, and I've done it for a few songs, but basically we've got this section that we can loop. And so when I'm playing the song, we'll go in here and, uh, you can see that it will highlight whatever, uh, thing, whatever lyrics are being sung at that moment. So if we want to like skip to a section, it's pretty easy to find it. And it's especially easy if you have the regions. And um, so I'm going to click on solos and then I'm going to click the, click again. And it's probably a little hard to see, but it's got a little repeat. And it's telling you that it's repeating. You can click that to turn it on and off. And so at this point, it's just going to keep the solos section repeating until somebody clicks this button. But this allows you to sort of... Uh, have a like an audience participation section of a song or you know an arbitrarily long solo if you want to uh, and you can also attach this to a midi foot controller if you want to and um, that way this ipad doesn't have to be like within arm's reach all right so that's basically how i've this set up i've got um uh, you know i'm starting to put in all of the songs that we play um you can break things down in basically you can use markdown. You can put chords, uh, in the songs. Um, yeah, it's really, really nice and I'm really enjoying it. So that's basically my setup for stage tracks, uh, for backing tracks live.